Hello and welcome to the Nikon D5200 channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, microphones, in particular uh, DSLR mics. We've referred to sound and video before uh, and uh, we showed you some of the various ways that you could capture sound for your videos and we're going to go into a bit more detail with DSLR mics today. Um, when we showed you last time, we showed you an NTG2 mic, which is the long sort of shotgun mic, uh, which is the industry standard. It's the mic that everybody has on the end of poles whenever they're doing interviews, etc., uh, which is a superb microphone, but it's not actually designed for DSLRs. Uh, and the ones that we're going to be looking at today are DSLR specific. So the first one we're going to look at is uh, this Rode. It's a Rode video mic, that's what it's called, uh, and it basically does what it says on the tin. Uh, it is a mono mic, and what you will find, in fact, is that the mono mic, in this instance, is by far the most preferred mic. Um, it is particularly good for documentaries, uh, for interviews, and for concerts because obviously because it has the cold shoe and fits directly into the camera facing the same way as the lens it picks up the sound from wherever you're shooting from or to uh, and that obviously is a huge advantage and the reason it's so good that it's mono is because it basically picks up the sound from in front of you um, the stereo mics i'll show you one in a minute uh, have a much wider and broader um, uh, area from which they pick up sound and they're far better for picking up ambient sound but for this which is a basic as I say the Rode video mic it's a basic mono shotgun mic it fits here and it uh, slots into the camera now the next one I'm going to show you is this Rode stereo mic and this is as you called the Rode stereo video mic you can see it's much shorter and blunter it's not a shotgun mic in that sense, and it does pick up the ambient sound because it is stereo. So it's very good if you want ambient sound, but in most cases, you will probably want shotgun sound clarity from directly in front of the camera. But of course, if you've got people moving around, then it is an option. Though it must be said that perhaps using a Tascam uh, or a radio mic like this might be your preferred option if people are moving around too much in the frame. The good things about these two mics is that they do have high-pass filters. Now, a high-pass filter means that it actually uh, ignores or does not record anything below 80 hertz. And 80 hertz is that sort of distant rumble of traffic, or perhaps if you're indoors, it's air conditioning that you really don't want to hear and that you would want to take out of, of the sound post-production anyway and that has a high pass filter now um, this one as it's slightly more advanced also it allows you to take uh, about 10 decibels out um, uh, of the sound quality going in and that's very useful one of the useful things about a high pass filter is that it also reduces the uh, the level of plosives in people's speech the P's in particular, um, which are quite explosive when they come out of people's mouths and they can offer instant dis distortion to your recording. So the high pass filter will reduce that. But the minus 10, which we've got here, allows you to actually reduce the amount of sound going in to the camera in the first place. And that's very useful if you're doing something very loud. So if you've got something like motorsport, where you know that the sound of the car is going past you and it's going to be extremely loud for a short period of time, then you might want to put a minus 10 on that because it will reduce the quantity of the sound going into the camera, though not necessarily the quality. And that's quite useful for this camera. Now, oh, by the way, you do get a dead cat with that, so you can reduce the wind noise further if you want to. Now, one of the things about uh, the D5200, which is, of course, what we tend to be talking about, is that it does have uh, a jack for sound to go in, but it doesn't have a jack for sound to come out, which means that if you actually really need to know the quality of the sound at the point of recording, you can't hear it. Uh, so we would suggest that you buy one of these. It's a basic splitter. 
uh, and this enables you to uh, put your mic onto the top of the camera and instead of uh, putting this jack directly into the camera you would put it into one of the slots of the, in the splitter and then the other side of the splitter you would put your headset uh, and then obviously this one would go into the side of the camera. Now that enables you to obviously do the recording but it also enables you more importantly to be able to listen to the sound as it goes into the camera and it's very useful if you have any opportunity for example to do any pre-tests so that if somebody's talking you can test that sound and make sure that it's okay uh, as it goes into the camera before you start actually recording the bit that you really need to record so that's very useful. With these two mics you need to remember that these are just microphones and the actual recording uh, goes on inside the camera and we've done a video about this earlier on uh, for movie settings I think where we talked about the audio going into the camera uh, just to recap, when you set the audio, you're really looking at a peak of a between 12 and 14. It's actually minus 12 or 14, but you wouldn't really notice if you looked on the screen because you can't see it, but it's about 12 or 14. And that means that uh, it will normally record at that level. And then if there is any sudden noise, then it will be able to go up and be able to absorb that distortion without it going into the amber and the red. So you aim for 12, 14 and you use these uh, mics, either the mono or the stereo, to uh, get the sound into the camera with a limited amount of control as to well, the quality of the sound and the quantity of the sound that will go through the system. So the third mic we're going to look at is also a Rode mic. Uh, there are other mics available, there are obviously other manufacturers, but these are the best ones, frankly. And if you're going to buy a mic, you might as well buy a decent one. And Rode are the industry leaders in this, so it's worth at least looking at them first. Uh, this is the Rode VideoMic Pro. Um, and um, the useful thing about this, although it falls into the, the same category as the other two in many ways, in that it's a shotgun mic, this one is mono as opposed to stereo, uh, and it also has the high pass filter, which is really important these days. There's so much ambient sound going on that we don't even notice until we have to sit down and do post-production sound work, um, and that's really important. But this also gives you the option of turning up the noise level going into the camera and turning down the noise level coming into the camera just off the back of the mic. Now this is really useful because if you are say doing a concert uh, which involves loud music and speech for example then you're going to find yourself in a situation where you find that you're trying to set for the loud sound and then you start to miss when people start talking and vice versa. Uh, if you can predict when people are going to start talking, when the sound is going to go down, then it enables you actually to switch to minus 10 decibels for the very loud stuff and up to plus 20 decibels when people are talking. And that means that this controls the level of sound going into the camera. Now, it means that because of that, you don't have to start changing the levels in the camera halfway through what's going on and indeed if you wanted to this is so versatile that in many cases you can leave the sound levels in the camera on auto and this will deal with it. Uh, because it's at the back you can actually do it as it's happening which makes it a lot easier. So it's a very useful um, improvement really on what Rode mics were doing previously. Uh, it enables you to have more control over the sound and it enables you to control the quality and the quantity of the sound that goes into the camera. Again, it's exactly the same. It's got a cold shoe here. Uh, it's got the uh, jack here, which will either go into the camera or into the splitter, depending on how you want to do that. Uh, and um, I must say, we've had this a while now and it is a pretty good mic. Now, if you want any more information on any of these three mics that we've shown you today, uh, you can either click on the links or you can go through to the website and have a look. We've got a page on that. Or indeed, we'll drop some links down below in the description for you to go and have a look at these mics. Um, we deal in the UK with a company called Rubberdub, who are sound experts, uh, and they're pretty good, and they'll hopefully have some good deals should you wish to buy one. Uh, and failing that, if you're in the US, then uh, we have other assorted affiliates who you can buy from. So 
these are good mics. They're a good investment. And um, if you are looking to do any serious video or filmmaking with your DSLR, you're really going to need one of these.